I want to say good morning to Lori Russo Neptune. She's an astronomer at the Dunlop Institute for Astronomy and Astrophysics at the University of Toronto. She is, we must note, the first Indigenous woman in Canada to get a PhD in astrophysics, the first Inu astrophysicist in the country, which makes it an extra privilege to have you with us. She's in Montreal today, ahead of the big day. Good morning, Lori, and welcome to our program. Good morning. Thank you for having me. What's your level of excitement about Eclipse Day, Lori? Oh, it's super high. I just um, got up this morning knowing it was a special day, and I think, uh, like everybody here that will be there to watch this magnificent show, uh, it's going to be for the first time, and I can't wait to see what I heard about. So you've never seen one yourself, even as an astrophysicist, you have never had the experience of a total solar eclipse. What are you expecting no. then? I, I'm just expecting something unbelievable, not imaginable, something that you can write about, but something that you have to see. I think that's right, and it could be quite a profound emotional experience for you in a couple of ways. Uh, just in terms of the the wonder, the awe of the universe and the cosmos as an astrophysicist. So let me ask you about that first of all. There is going to be so much science done today. What do you think we're going to learn? And what are you most interested in from a scientific point of view today? Well, it's the occasion for millions of people to see for the first time the solar corona. It's the atmosphere of our sun. Uh, currently, it's really active, so I can't wait to see what kind of display we will have. But also, during that moment, we'll see also the glow on the moon. And it's a special glow. It's the glow that first bounced on the Earth and then go back to the moon before going back to us. So it's a reflection of ourselves. And that is also very interesting to look at. So I think so, just in terms of seeing what we can't see normally because of the brightness of the sun, when we get more of a picture of what's happening with the corona and the chromosphere and all the things with which you work on a daily basis. No wonder you're excited about that. I can't help but notice your t-shirt as well. So let's move to that. My ancestors were astronomers. I know that you've been spending quite a bit of time researching the Innu oral traditions when it comes to astronomy. Tell me a little bit about your journey and your learning. Yeah, it's, it's now a passion for me. And it started also with a total solar eclipse. Um, it was the one in 2017. I was in Hawaii, so I only got to see a partial eclipse then. But a friend of mine asked me if I knew about my community perspective on solar eclipses. And back then, I didn't know. And I felt like it was something missing, because I'm an astronomer, and I'm Innu, and I should know those things. And um, unfortunately, I didn't hear those stories at that time. And so I started researching them. And what I found was just a marvel of information. And I started this journey into finding astronomy and physics and the oral tradition. So you have learned a lot, and I would like you to teach me and us a little bit. There is an Inu hero named, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Sakapesh. Can you tell us about him? Yes, yes. So there's a very special story about Tsakapesh and solar eclipses. So Tsakapesh is a hero that was born a long, long time ago. He has special power, but in those days, he's very young. Um, his parents were killed, unfortunately, by probably a mammoth or some kind of animal from prehistoric era. And he's with his sister, and he's learning to hunt. And he goes with bow and arrow and traps as well. And he always feels like something is watching over him, following him, and he decides to trap it. His sister helped him fashion a snare, and he put it on a pack where the snow had melted. And the next day, the sun doesn't come up. It's darkness everywhere. Animals are scared. And Sakapesh he caught the sun. So they go there, and everybody try to help him because it's too hot. They can't release the sun. But eventually, a little mouse that was at that in those days very very large like as large as a mountain came close and chewed the snare to release the sun and that's a story related to solar eclipses because Tsakapesh is the man on the moon the moon Tsakapesh who catches the sun with a snare and the snare is that ring of light we see around the moon during the solar eclipses 
Lori, thank you so very much. We are going to learn so much today, and that is an important part of the story to keep in mind, the wonderful oral storytelling tradition, and thank you for that. I wish I were in Parc Jean Drapeau today in Montreal to hear your presentation. You're going to be a part of the program. Enjoy that, enjoy the people with you, and enjoy your very first total solar eclipse. Lori from Montreal today.